Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at my first Rapido American Diesel and I'm really looking forward to it. Rapido trains have announced a whole ton of different models over here in Britain, but a lot of them are yet to be delivered. So I thought while we wait, why not take a look at some of Rapido's American models? And so with that, I've got one of those today. So today's loco is this. It is the Rapido trains Alco RS11 locomotive. And first of all, wow, look at this packaging. This is some crazy retro style right here. And when this arrived, I was quite surprised because it really looks like it's from the 70s or something. And as far as I know, Rapido were not around in the 70s. I think they were founded in 2003. So unless Jason is far more ancient than he looks, this has got to be a lot more modern. It's got to be less than 20 years old. So either way, they've done an amazing job at making this packaging look retro. Either that or they've done a terrible job of making it look modern. But no, it's got to be the former, hasn't it? And to be honest with you, the deal I got for this, considering it's Rapido, was pretty good. The RRP, as far as I can find for the analog version, I should note, isn't that bad. It's $225, which is around £179.95. That doesn't seem too bad for 2022. And I bought this from Train World for a much lower price of $159.99, which is about £128. So if this loco is up to the high Rapido standards that I'm familiar with, then this ought to have been a really good bargain. But this is my first Rapido diesel of any kind, and it's my first Rapido American locomotive. So let's get started. So the packaging has already made quite the statement, hasn't it? But of course it only features a photo of the real locomotive. We've seen nothing of the model so far, so I'm definitely eager to get into this. First though, let me show you the end of the box to show you what exactly I've got. So it is an Alco RS11 DC. There are um, DCC fitted and sound fitted examples, of course, too. Pennsylvania, so it's a Pennsylvania RS11 without a train phone. I don't know what that means for the model in terms of detail. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. And it's number 8654. And the other thing I like about this packaging is on the end of the box here, because it gives a very, very brief description. Alco's 1800 horsepower answer for flexible motive power needs on everything from mainline freight to passenger service. So it basically sums up exactly what the locomotive is about, uh, but in a very brief way, which I think is cool, you know, for someone who just sees this and doesn't know anything about it. It's a really good idea and it's very digestible. You can take it in in 10 seconds uh, just looking at it in a shop. Clever idea. Okay, let's lift the lid. The vintage lid is coming off. Wow, and this is vintage as well. Right, I'm guessing this has got to be intentional, right? This must have been intended to look vintage. Operation manual. This is going to be quite the experience, isn't it? So the first page looks like it's a bit of an introduction to Rapido, telling me off a little bit for this being my first Rapido American Loco. Anyway, let's just uh, jump through this because it seems extremely detailed. So we've got prototype history, a little bit about breaking in. So yeah, that's fairly standard. I always do that. How to hold your RS11. Now this could be interesting. So it's the usual spiel. Uh, it's very detailed. Apparently you're supposed to grab it from underneath the fuel tank. So I think I understand what that means. Check Checking and adjusting your locomotive. Well, I'll certainly be checking it over, that's for sure. Missing or damaged parts, removing the shell, so there's information on that. No diagrams so far, though. Installing a DCC decoder, so they are very much relying on just uh, written descriptions rather than diagrams, although maybe there is a bit of a diagram here. Uh, okay, so this is all operation. Okay, so I think we can say, without spending an hour reading all of this, that it is very, very detailed. And of course, I will go back and read in more detail the important bits about the actual operation of the logo, just in case there's anything unusual. And then there is a diagram here. This looks like an exploded parts diagram, which is all numbered, all of the parts. And does this include? Yeah, this includes the chassis as well. Wow. What a complex loco, <laughs> we're just trying to see what the biggest number is. But it's definitely into the hundreds, isn't it? An awful lot of parts there. So 
Can't wait to see them all put together, I guess. Oh, and there's a table of contents on the back. Very nice. So that seems to check all of the boxes, doesn't it? Now let's check this box and see what's inside. Here we go. So it seems well packaged. Oh, there's the first look at the loco. And it sure is well packaged. Look at this. There's all sort of foam packing the handrails. Now that is a smart idea. How many times have I seen broken handrails? Hopefully not today. Hopefully that will have done its job. Okay, we've got an accessories pack here, which appears to include some horns and a few other details. Even though the instructions were like a Bible, um, I did not see a section on fitting accessories. So I might have to comb over it, I suppose, in case it's mentioned under a different subsection. Either that, or you've just got to guess what this stuff is for. But uh, there's not a huge amount in there to mess about with. Right, let's pull out this loco and I'll try and bear in mind uh, what I was told about how to hold this loco. All right, well, it's not revealing too much at the moment, so let's pull this out. Yeah, very, very high attention to detail in the packaging here. Look at all this foam. So I'll be very surprised, unless this is like the worst quality model I've ever seen, I'll be very surprised if anything's broken on this. Hopefully not. All right. Let's take our first look then and try and strip some of this packaging off it. So we've got plastic covering it. There's our first look at the top of the loco. Seems to have quite a nice finish to it, doesn't it? Let's pull out some of this foam then. I guess this is the part where you could damage uh, the handrails, but no, it's coming away easily, which is cool. That's four pieces, five and six. So that is crazy. I, I can honestly say I've never had that level of packaging before on a loco. Hopefully this doesn't mean that it's gonna be super fragile. So yes, my hand is big enough to grip the fuel tank, but there it is, my brand new Rapido RS11 locomotive. And this feels immediately like a quality model. I can tell just by touching it that the running plate here, or whatever you call it in the US, is die cast, and yet that shows through in the weight. I've already spotted real moving chains attached to one of the bogies there. That's an insane level of detail right there. And it feels like quite a sturdy model, to be honest with you. The handrails and such don't seem to be too flexible. Uh, nothing seems to be buckling under my fingers. And that's quite impressive given how clearly very, very detailed this model is. Now I do like the livery as well. It's quite a plain livery, but uh, the splash of yellow here and there on the steps and such really does make this look quite elegant, doesn't it? So can't wait to take a much closer look at this loco, but before I do, let's have a bit of history on the prototype. The RS11 was built by Alco and the Montreal Locomotive Works between 1956 and 1964 over which period 431 examples were produced in total. The design was intended to be a road switcher, which basically means that the engines would be expected to perform both shunting and mainline services. This would be Alco's first high horsepower road switcher, producing a power output of 1.34 megawatts, an attractive effort of 29,177 kilograms. Many railroad companies purchased these locomotives so they could be seen in all sorts of places around the states. Most notably, the Mexican state-owned railroad company bought quite a lot. The New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad bought some. The Norfolk and Western Railroad, the Pennsylvania, as you can see here, and loads more. A few examples of the RS11 do also survive in preservation. So there it is, up close and personal for you, my Rapido RS11 locomotive. And I've got to be honest, this thing seems really, really good. Given what I paid for this thing, it is definitely exceeding my expectations. The quality seems to be really good. I've already mentioned the die-cast running plate, which is not a feature I think I've ever seen before on an American diesel so far. And of course that contributes to the weight, which is very good, 398 grams, so damn near 400 grams, which is more than the Atlas GP40 I looked at some time ago, and I thought that loco was heavy. Also, the instructions led me to believe that this locomotive would fall apart the moment I looked at it, but if anything, the opposite seems to have been true. It seems very sturdy. I haven't noticed any detailing that is on the wonk or broken or looks like it's about to drop off. The build quality seems to be really high and all of the components seem to be high quality as well. So that's impressive. 
Speaking of the instructions, I think they ought to come with a bit of a warning, to be honest, because they're both a joy and a nuisance to read. So they're very funny, I mean, it's enjoyable, it's full of jokes and humour, you will definitely be entertained if you read the instructions. But if you just want the information and you want it quickly, you're going to have a hard time, because what should take a sentence to explain, in most cases takes an entire paragraph to explain, which also explains why the thing is like a massive novel. So yeah, it's very entertaining, but if you've got a problem and you just want to solve it quickly, uh, it could get quite frustrating, so consider yourself warned. Anyway, let's take a look at this locomotive then, because clearly it is extremely detailed. The decoration is fairly basic on this example as per the livery, but what is here has been done well. So you've got the Pennsylvania lettering, very, very accurately printed, and some of the smaller printed details seem to be fantastically accurate as well. Hopefully they will be legible. I think they look as though they are. Uh, the close-up lens will tell us for sure. And then you have, like I say, got a few painted details in the yellow, which looks excellent. So all of the handrails around the end and also the steps, those have all been picked out in the yellow. But it really is the fidelity of the detail and the sheer number of separately fitted parts that makes this loco impressive to me. So the handrails, for instance, yes, they are quite sturdy, which is a massive surprise given how they're built, because according to that diagram I looked at, the supports for the handrail are actually separate parts. The handrailing itself is a separate piece to the supports. What, I don't know why they would do that. You would think that that would make this really complex to build and also quite fragile. But uh, no, these are actually more sturdy, I would say, than most other locos of this type. So that is really impressive. It seems as though, and I think the exploded diagram backs this up as well, seems as though all of these grills are etched or at the very least separately fitted. And the texture on those, the moulded detail, is absolutely wonderful. They do look fantastic. And there's another one up on top here. Again, that looks etched, doesn't it? Uh, it's far too finely etched to actually see behind it, so I'm not sure if there's a fan back there or not, but it doesn't really matter because you, you actually can't see through it because it's such a fine grill. I guess while we're up on the top, you can see there is a wealth of other detail going on up here. And these horns, I believe these could be metal, painted metal horns. Uh, they do seem very sturdy and uh, there is a little bit of paint missing on them, which I guess is unfortunate, but it does show the fact that they are made of metal. And that's the story really with the entire model. It just seems to be super high quality. So let's take a look at the ends. We've got the, uh, well, I guess this is like the mock KD coupler, made of metal, so that's good quality. Loads of detail around the pilot area, including these fine little chains, which are just molded, I believe, but they look good. And then behind that area, you've got the individual ladder rungs, which seem to be separately fitted as well. There's a range of lights up top here. We'll have to see how those work. Hopefully they will work on analog. I'm just assuming at this point that the Loco has got working lights. I mean, it's going to surely, isn't it? Moving on to the cab itself, you can see we've got nice flush glazing and some detail inside the cab. It seems things have been painted inside there. A lot of people have told me, oh, American HO Locos, they, they don't tend to have painted cabs. Well, this one does, and it's not that much more expensive than some of the others I've been looking at. One amazing thing about this is the walkways. I mean, the main walkway around the Loco, that is detailed, but on the ends, they seem to be separately fitted etched pieces because there's an aspect of transparency to them. You can see through them, they are properly etched pieces. So I think all of these individual steps might actually be separately fitted. I'm not sure about that, but the effect is quite amazing, isn't it? And then over on the other end, you've got a similar level of detail, a whole ton of separately fitted parts, but you don't notice them because they're so well fitted. They just blend in, they're not wonky, they don't distract you, they don't grab your attention because they don't look right. And of course, that is the whole point of a model like this. It's just supposed to look like the real thing, and it's, this thing really does. Okay, let's take a look at the bogey detail. I'll show you this one because obviously this has got the real separately fitted chains on it. Uh, I've never seen that before on a model in my hands. I know some others have got it, Acura Scale are doing it, I think on their 37s is it, but I've never seen it in the flesh, so that is absolutely amazing. And behind all of that, of course, there is a fair amount of bogey detail, the axle boxes, the springs, it's all nicely represented, it looks fantastic. And then you've got the fuel tanks here, which again are super detailed. You've got all of the little pipes and such connecting to it, and all of the detailing and the different parts stand out beautifully looks really, really good. So, I mean, this thing, this thing only cost me £128. 
You can't say fairer than that. It's a good quality loco. The level of detail is absolutely wonderful. And fingers crossed, it's also going to be a good runner. It sounds as though maintenance might be a little bit tricky with this. The description of the body removal in the instructions sounds absolutely horrendous. Uh, so I'm not looking forward to that, but obviously before I do any of that, we'll get the loco tested. Anyway, let's get to it. So there is the RS11 down onto the track and the first performance test has been filmed already and I'll show you that shortly. Next though, I want to talk a little bit about the mechanism. Now there is both good and bad news with this mechanism. The good news is the mechanism itself seems to be good and robust. I hope to goodness it should be relatively maintenance free so that it should last a long time without you ever having to take the model apart. The bad news is if you do need to access the insides of this model for any reason, be it for maintenance, accessing the DCC decoder or fitting crew into the cab, you're going to have a genuinely rotten time, a time that will probably end with the destruction of the locomotive. The way the body has been designed is absolutely terrible. Pure focus on manufacturing, no thought to the customer further down the line. I really don't like that aspect of it. But let's talk about the rest. So you can't see the pickups looking at the axles. So what's going on there? Well, removing the base keeper plates isn't the nicest in the world. The instructions say just shove a, a small flat bladed screwdriver in there and prise the bottom off. And uh, indeed I was able to do that and the clips did not break but I'm not keen on doing this. It required a lot of force, seems too much force for such a fragile model. And can you honestly guarantee me that I'll be able to do this every year or two for the rest of my life in maintaining this loco without those clips breaking? I don't think so. I think screws would be better. Anyway, once the base was off, on first glance, it looks like a crappy Helgen mechanism. Uh, just gears, plastic chassis, and no bearings. But in fact, there are bearings, but they're hidden in the axle boxes. And these bearings also act as the pickups as well. So they are live to each wheel. And then there's this conductive bus bar below, uh, which is wired up to the chassis. It does mean though that there is a plastic axle connecting the two wheels together, which is not something I'm that keen on. I've had bad experiences with that sort of design in the past. Hopefully this one from Rapido will be a bit more long lasting. Okay, so body removal. We are onto the worst aspect of this model by far now. So according to the instructions, body removal starts by removing the cab. And the instructions say that this is the easiest task. Well, it's not easy. The first thing you have to do is disassemble the handrails, so you actually have to pull the fragile metal handrails out of the cab in four places. Not a pleasant task. And then it says that the cab is just clipped onto the body, it's not screwed or anything, which would have been a quality solution as far as I'm concerned. It's clipped and they say don't twist it or anything like that, just pull it straight up. Well, I did this, I pulled it very unreasonably hard, far too much force for a model of this detail and it was not coming off. All I managed to do was break some of the glazing and some of those separately fitted steps came off the model. I could not get the cab off, I, it just was not going to shift, it wasn't worth it, I was going to destroy the model. They then say that you've got to remove the front hood of the locomotive. Again, it's clipped into place, no screws. You've also got to remove the handrails from the boxes. And to get the hood off itself, you've got to pry it off with another flat screwdriver. And apparently the rest of the body is clipped on as well. And in, in the instructions, they basically say, don't do this. So they've paid no attention to the serviceability of this loco. Your mileage may vary, but even I'm not confident to disassemble this thing without damaging it, which basically means, of course, if you want this thing to be DCC, you've got to buy one from Rapido with a decoder installed. And that is a bit anti-consumer, isn't it? Given that effectively that reduces your choices. To be honest, I don't understand the overcomplication of the body fitting. A couple of screws and the body should come off. The body doesn't have to be one piece. It can be modular like this, but let's have all of the pieces come off together like we have on our British engines. I have to say our British manufacturers do this much, much better from what I've seen so far. 
gauging then, the instructions actually hint that the gauging might be off and they say to remove the base keeper plates if so and uh, like twist the wheels on their plastic axles um, to re-gauge immediate face palm. They should be gauged correctly from the factory, let's just say it like that. And they more or less were, I got 14.4 millimeters back to back on each axle except for the last one which was considerably tighter at 14.1 millimeters. So not that impressed with the consistency there. Again, I think it's probably those plastic axles which might cause that because this is very, very rarely a problem with other locos I've got that have standard pickups and metal axles. So essentially uh, the mechanism seems good, but I wasn't able to access all of it. I couldn't show you the motor for instance. I assume it's a good quality motor and the instructions or the diagram rather did at least show a couple of flywheels on there. So it's obviously a decent quality mechanism but you better hope that nothing ever goes wrong with it because you're not going to be able to get into it if it does. For now though, let's move on from this by far the worst aspect of the model and let me show you how that first performance test went. So let's finally test this then and see if the loco actually works. The instructions strangely said that I was to clean the wheels of the locomotive before I test it which is not something that I ever do in a review. Uh, most of the locos I buy, you just put on the track and they can work properly straight away. Hopefully this loco from Rapido will be the same as that, um, but at the moment I haven't cleaned its wheels because I don't normally do that and it would be unfair if this one got a, like a service before I did the review and uh, I don't do that for other locos. But of course, if it's stuttering and struggling, I will have to clean the wheels. But I'm hoping that won't be necessary. I'm hoping it's just a case of a mother, in this case, Mother Rapido, worrying too much about her children. I don't know. But uh, yeah, if, if the wheels need cleaning, I will do it. But straight out of the box, let's give it a test. Forwards direction, give it some juice. Does it work? Yes. <laughs> and it seemed to take off very smoothly, I have to say. I think when you've been doing this, as long as I have at least, you can just tell when a loco is a good runner. Even if its first start isn't that smooth, um, you can just get a sense by the sound of it and the, the way it moves off, you can get a sense what it's gonna be like after it's fully run in. And I gotta say, I'm getting the sense that this is a quality runner. At the moment, I don't know anything about the mechanism. I haven't been through the potentially frustrating disassembly yet, so. I might be spitting my words back out again uh, when I'm editing this clip, but testing for the first time, this seems to be absolutely awesome. What is the speed like? I'm going to set this to 50 and run it past. I've got to say that Atlas Loco was a lot more sluggish than this when I first tested that. This seems to be really beautiful. Uh, it's, the speed seems sensible. I mean, this is a road switcher, so it's not just doing switching. It's not got to be dead slow. It's got to do some mainline stuff as well. And uh, it seems as though this loco has got the potential to do that as well. Now, the lights seem to be working. Are they directional? Yeah, they're directional. So the running numbers light up regardless of the direction. This is on analog, obviously on DCC. Your mileage might vary. But then the headlights themselves seem to come on uh, whenever the loco is going forwards. So you get extra lights coming on uh, at the front, whichever end that might be at the time. I've also noticed that that cab detail is illuminating. <laughs> How am I going to film that? I'll do it on the rolling road. Look at this. When you start the loco, the cab detail actually lights up. So the panels and such that would light up on the real thing they light up on the model. I've got to say, that is the kind of feature that absolutely amazes me. Oh, thank goodness I didn't miss it. I was, gonna, I was looking to see if there was a cab light, and then I saw that, and I thought that was even better. So, so far it's looking amazing, but we haven't done the crawl yet, so let's try it. should say this hasn't been run in or broken in, as Rapido call it in their instructions. So this is not the final inspection. Um, this is just what I like to do when I first unbox a loco but it will get its full break in in just a second. But straight out of the box, here's a crawl. It's moving, folks. <laughs> so, it seems to check out, doesn't it? It's crawling, folk, right? So that is just insanely good. Hasn't been broken in yet, so it's running basically perfectly. I, I wouldn't fault this in any way. It's not cut out, it's not done anything it shouldn't. Still going. It's an insanely detailed loco. It's extremely heavy. 
And even if I paid the RRP of around £179.95, this would still have been better value than a lot of our British models. And you know what, American viewers? You, you were always telling me how expensive your stuff is and how it's, it's no better than our British stuff. In fact, some of it's worse. Well, that might be true. I haven't tried a lot of American stuff, but that does not apply to this. This looks better, it's been assembled better, and it's working better than a lot of my British locos that cost a lot more than this, you know what I mean? So I'm very, very impressed, very impressed. Let's send this off around the track and let's see how it performs. Off it goes. So the gearing seems perfectly sensible, uh, to me at least, to the layman, uh, considering what this loco was designed to do in real life. Seems like it's not too fast at 50% speed, but it seems certainly to be a realistic speed. If you turn the speed down, it's still got the power to be smooth, even right down to the ridiculously slow speeds. So for switching or shunting, if you're from the UK, it's gonna be perfectly good. And as we saw when I turned it up a little bit more, it's still got a fair bit of speed to it as well if you did want to model some mainline express runs or whatever. Yeah, it's gonna go nice and quick for you. So in other words, this Loco is performing wonderfully at all speeds. And that's before it's been broken in, which is a very good sign. So, this Loco is looking pretty awesome, isn't it? I don't think I need to clean the wheels. I think that's just Repito really trying to get their Locos running their best for you straight out of the box. It doesn't need it. It's not stuttering on the express points. Seems to be just the same as every other Loco. Uh, it'll get its wheels cleaned when I service it, but uh, that's all. So, amazing. I'm very, very impressed. Let's keep this running now. I'll do 30 minutes in each direction, and then we'll come back and I'll finish off the review. But this is awesome. Okay, so that is running in complete. And this thing has been faultless. It's a marvelous, marvelous runner. So smooth, very, very quiet, and certainly no derailing or stuttering or anything like that. It does seem as though that one axle that is out of gauge isn't causing any problems, at least not for me. Obviously, if you've got one of these and it's not behaving as it should, you're seeing running issues, that's definitely the first thing I would run to check. The pulling power is pretty good as well, 0.52 newtons. It's quite high for a loco of this size. I mean, this is about the size of a Backman Class 20, and that translates to around 31 coaches on straight and level track, so that's a lot. Unfortunately, I don't have 31 American coaches. I've just got my Motley collection of American wagons back there, so not a full test of what this loco is capable of, although I do have some new wagons to review quite soon. So, how is the performance now that this has run in? Has it, well, it's not gonna be any better, is it? Can't possibly be, it was perfect in the first place. Uh, but it seems to be no worse, <laughs> um, which is the only thing it could have been, and it isn't. It seems to be just as good. Let's have that crawl again, just to reiterate. Look at that. So, amazing control right the way down to the slow speed. Definitely one of the best performers I've ever seen. Yeah, it's that, uh, it's the gold standard, isn't it? Very much so. And backwards, let's try a real slow backwards. There we go. And it's kicking in there at speed, it's less than 20 speed there. So uh, it's certainly responsive right down to a very, very low level. Okay, let's go and couple then. Let's go and couple to some rolling stock. Just check that that all works as it should. And of course, the massively precise control you have over this thing makes it a perfect switcher. I mean, I can I didn't do a great job there, <laughs> admittedly. Uh, but yeah, you can couple to things incredibly precisely with this. Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's find out then, did it couple correctly? Let's see. Yes, first time. So, let's see how it gets on. We'll set this at a bit of a, a slowish freight speed. Something like that, I reckon. Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad. And then on the middle line, I've got my Atlas GP40. And I have to say, I mean, this GP40, it's not of the same quality of this new Rapido Loco. I thought it was, and I was quite impressed with it when I reviewed it, of course. And I think it was great for what I paid for it, but compared to this new Rapido thing, uh, it's definitely not at the same level. But a nice Loco still, and it's got some coaches, probably equally unsuitable ones, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. And then on the inside line, a bit of a strange choice. It is an American built locomotive, or at least an American design, but it's the Murphy Models 121, which makes it an Irish locomotive. 
But I wanted to show this one because it's similarly awkward to disassemble and access this loco, but it has got an opening hatch disguised in the top of it, which allows you to access the DCC socket. And uh, I think something like that would really have done Rapido proud. But it wasn't to be, unfortunately. And she's got some mega boxes, a bit big for her, I suppose. Anyway, let's go and see how the Rapido RS11 is getting on. So it seems to be completely unfazed by the presence of rolling stock. And a lot of this rolling stock has quite a lot of drag to it. Some of it's quite heavy. Fine. It's not bothered, is it? Look at it. So there's obviously a really great mechanism inside there with a lot of torque. I would love to have seen it. I would have loved to have seen the motor, but it wasn't worth destroying the loco to see it. Now, I was already damaging it, uh, just trying to get the cab off, and it was stuck fast. So, yeah, it's I'm, un, I'm annoyed and I'm upset about that, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful runner. It looks fantastic. The price was right, and there are DCC-fitted and DCC-sound versions that you can buy factory-fitted with DCC, so it's not like you really need to get access. Obviously, I much prefer full access to a loco. I prefer easy serviceability. I want to get to the motor if I need to. Um, that isn't to be on this loco, but that's the only real criticism I have on the loco. And I think there are much worse things that this loco could fall down on. So it's frustrating, sure, but I don't think it ruins the model. And I'm still really, really pleased with the purchase. I mean, look at this thing. It's just such a cool looking loco. So well built, so good looking. Overall, I'm just overwhelmingly impressed. And Rapido, I think I'm going to forgive you for your silly instructions as well. I thought, you know, that these guys, they're not taking it seriously. They're prattling about. But having seen the model, I think you've earned the right to be daft in the instructions. So uh, yes, you're issued a pardon on that. So let's have some ratings then on Rapido's RS11 locomotive. Generally speaking, this is a wonderful locomotive, one of the best I've seen this year. If you like tinkering with your engines, if you like seeing the insides of them, this is not going to be for you because you'll hate it if that's the case. But besides that, amazing. Level of detail then has to be five star. The number of separately fitted parts is crazy. The livery is wonderful, you've got fully etched grills and everything. The handrails seem to be made of metal and they're very, very sturdy. All the little ladder rungs are on there, real chains on the bogies. Lights inside the cab so that the instruments light up. Yeah, the level of detail is a very, very easy five. The performance also is a very easy five because there's nothing about it I can criticize. It works perfectly, it never derails, it's perfectly smooth, the speed is reasonable, the crawl is excellent, it's still got the high speeds, the pickups seem to be reliable, it doesn't seem to cut out at all, it never has at least. So it's five star, an easy, easy five star. The pulling power is also faultless as well, 31 coaches or 0.52 newtons, that's quite a lot for a loco of this size. It's actually the same as the Backman Class 45, which is a massive diesel. Uh, it is a little bit less than the GP40, even though that loco was heavier, but I think that was an exceptionally good puller. This one, definitely nothing wrong with it. The mechanism then loses a couple of stars. First of all, plastic axles. Not a big fan of this and it has led to a bit of a gauging issue with mine, at least one of the axles was out of gauge, and I think Rapido are aware of this, because they mentioned that you should check for that in the instructions, which is very unusual, I've never noticed that before. Second of all, the way that the model fits together, the way that the body is fitted, is very, very uncustomer friendly. It's basically unserviceable, very easy to damage the loco, no screws involved clips, it's clearly been optimised for manufacture, and certainly not optimised for the customer's convenience when it comes to maintenance and accessing the DCC socket. Not impressed with that aspect of the design. However, whatever motor, mystery motor, is inside here, it's clearly a quality one because it performs excellently. Definitely a flywheel inside there, I could see it in the instructions and it shows through in the performance. There are bearings on the driving wheels. The pickups are unorthodox, that's for sure but they work perfectly, can't fault them, so no problem there. Overall, the mechanism seems to be okay. The quality is also a four for me, almost perfect. Great heavy loco, the build quality is very high, even the small, fine, minuscule details 
they were all perfectly fitted, nice and straight. Diecast running plate, of course, which is why the Loco is so heavy. I just think slightly better quality in the way the model fits together. A few more screws, a few less clips should make this thing last longer and of course be much more easy to access and service, but not a huge deal. The value for money then, overall, I would say this is about right. It's not a bargain, I don't think, but really at the RRP of $225 or the retailer price of $159.99, that's what I paid, you can't go wrong. This is effectively 128 quid plus some postage. It's worth that money, much better value than what we see over here in the UK these days. So great value. Overall then, that is 8.76 out of 10. That's a very, very high score. Let's pop that into the logbook. And there it is, top five, or top three, in fact. Third place, above the Hornby Hush Hush and below the Backman 03. Overall, a fantastic model. Very reasonably priced. And in fact, because this wasn't a completely extortionate ripoff, it's much, much easier to overlook this Loco's shortcomings, which, on the grand scheme of things, are pretty minor, I think. So there you have it then folks, that is the end of my first Rapido American locomotive review. And it's my first Rapido diesel as well. Overall, absolutely amazing. I think if Rapido's British locomotives turn out to be as good as this, then we're in for a very good time, aren't we? Hopefully they will be more serviceable, hopefully they will be a bit more user friendly, because if they're not, it's going to be pretty annoying, because people do at least like to fit decoders and that over here in the UK. And thanks to manufacturers like Dapol over here in the UK, people are used to having easy access to them. They're used to being able to swap them out and change them, remove them, replace them, whatever, very, very easily. If Rapido's Locos make that difficult, then I don't think they're going to go down very well. So that's definitely the one thing to watch. But certainly in terms of detail, performance, quality, uh, this is the Rapido that I've heard the legends about. And it's good to see them in person, I guess. So thank you for watching, comment down below, let me know what you think, and I will see you very soon for some more videos. Alright, cheers folks, take care.